Our topic this evening, Think Win-Win, motto of the believer. The principle of Think Win-Win is taken from the seven habits of highly effective people, written by Stephen J. Covey. Habit number four. However, his perspective was in looking at inter- uh, personal relationships how we deal with people whereas what I am looking at is the Islamic philosophy on human interaction with the world around us it includes people as well as the events in our lives the circumstances in which we are born etc and it's all inclusive not restricted only to interpersonal relationships but before going to look at that principle win-win for the believer let us look at the philosophy of the disbeliever which will help us to understand more clearly the win-win philosophy of the believer as we know in our declaration of faith we say la ilaha Illallah. We deny the falsehood first of the false worshipping of false gods and then we establish the worship of the true God. So let us look at the philosophy of the disbelievers with regards to life in general. We find that their philosophy is win-lose. The philosophy of the disbelievers with regards to their relationship to the world around them is one of win-lose. What do I mean? Good luck, bad luck. Win-lose is equivalent to good luck, bad luck. Meaning, they say, if I have good luck, then I win. If I have bad luck, then I lose. That's their philosophy and life. This is something which even the atheist, the person who says there is no God, disbeliever in truth, that's what governs his or her life. Good luck, bad luck. So what you find is that the disbelievers spend most of their lives in a quest for what will ensure for them good luck and prevent bad luck from happening to them that becomes a very important part of their lives and what you find in the west where i come from seven is a good luck number so they'll try to do things around seven four if you have what is called a four leaf clover it's a plant normally it has three leaves on the stalk but if you find one with four good luck it's a sign of good luck so people will get those and they will put them inside of little plastic uh, capsules and they wear them on their wrist or around the neck whatever it's for good luck right? at the same time you try to avoid certain bad luck thing numbers like 13 in the West 13 is a bad luck number so in the average uh, apartment building hotel etc in the west the floors when you go in the elevators there you'll see the numbers 10 11 12 14 15 what happened to 13 no 13 you walk down the street you'll see the houses are numbered 10 11 12 12 and a half 14 what happened to 13 this is a norm in the society. I know in, where you are here, that number is eight. Huh? Eight is the bad luck number. If your uh, license plate adds up to 17, for example, which means one plus seven, that equals eight. Not a good number. It lowers the value of your car, right? Bad luck. Also, you have widows. If a widow comes in your presence it's bad luck you don't want to have widows around you uh, dead bodies the dead body crosses you when you're leaving your home oh bad day firewood 
also the dobi and you you have a calendar here for bad hours of the day your uh, ragu kalam right and your yamagandam right these are all bad luck two hours every four hours every day are bad luck hours don't try to do anything good in these hours right and so you have a series of these kinds of charms that people seek out to uh, protect themselves from evil and to bring for themselves good luck we can laugh about that in regards to other people's beliefs but unfortunately cultural Muslims have their own substitutes hmm, don't we so our numbers we have 19 19 becomes a good luck number because the basmala Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is made up of 19 letters so we have some Muslims who for them 19 is an auspicious number and they favor it and the 99 names of Allah people believe that if you recite a certain name of Allah you know you, you can't your wife can't have a baby okay recite this name of Allah so many times you know blow it over water and drink it uh, after Maghrib having fasted that day and your wife's gonna have a baby similarly some people believe that you know your business is not good okay so you take another name of Allah Ar razaq for example then you make a, a, a piece of bread right when you're making your bread so you squeeze the uh, flour in the shape of Ar razaq then you cook it right you have a loaf of bread with Ar razaq and you eat that inshallah you're going to be successful what is this you know, this is charms amulets turning the names of Allah into good luck charms which has no basis from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also we have miniature Qur'ans Qur'ans that are made one inch by one inch by one inch thick people discover them and boast about how they have the smallest Qur'an in the world what is this Qur'an good for? you put it in a locket you wear it around your neck believing that it's going to protect you from evil so we turn the Quran into a good luck charm because that Quran is not for reading you open it up the letters are so small you would need a magnifying glass a microscope actually to read what is written on there so this is the way in general of the disbelievers in general as well as poor or weak believers cultural Muslims Muslims who live by custom and tradition and not according to the Quran and the Sunnah the Quran and the Sunnah as it was understood by the Sahaba now the Quran and Sunnah as it was understood by you and I by modern Muslims the modern interpretations no the Quran and the Sunnah as it was understood by the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They best understood it. So, if we leave now the disbeliever understanding of win-lose, and we come over to the Islamic understanding, the Islamic philosophy of win-win, it is based on the Islamic worldview that this world is fundamentally a test this world is fundamentally a test for human beings as Allah said in Surah Al-Mulk verse 2 الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا the one who created death and life in order to test which of you is best in deeds and in Surah Al-Kahf verse 7 inna ja'alna ma 'ala al-ard zina laha linabluwakum ayyuhum ahsanu amala indeed i have placed what i have placed on the earth is an adornment for it in order to test which of them is best in deeds so allah has identified clearly the purpose of this world this world is a test not a test for Allah to find out which of us is best in deeds 
because it's something he already knew before Allah created this world he already knew which of us is best in deeds he already knew which of us is going to hell and which of us is going to heaven this was already known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala